Hi, I'm Jana Martella. I'm a senior advisor at EDC, and I have spent my career here working on high quality early education. Hi, I'm Claire Waterman Irwin, and I'm a research scientist here at EDC, and uh, my career focuses on early childhood research. I think that um, research is really interesting when it comes uh, to early childhood, high quality early childhood education. Brain research have, has shown us that um, especially infants and toddlers, but also four and five-year-olds. Their brains are firing and growing and developing on all cylinders. They are learning a whole lot more than we adults, <laughs> and they're learning it faster, and they're gaining language. All of this uh, came out with a giant study from the National Academies of Science in 99 or so, called neurons to neighborhoods anytime anyone brings up neurons to neighborhoods i think it's kind of the bible of um, early childhood research i think if you aren't familiar with that um you should probably go back and read it because it's really important uh really important really long by the way really long and really important yes absolutely the conversation around universal pre-k in vermont started um a while back and jan i think you'd have more of the context of um how it developed and built over time um, but there has been a recognition that universal pre-kindergarten is important. So the state has invested in um, sending all three and four-year-olds or providing availability of pre-k to all three and four-year-olds um, starting in the 2016-17 school year. That's so interesting, the kind of marker point 16-17, which for all intents and purposes really is not so long ago. Um, but there's this history of early childhood engagement with some federal investment. If you think of Head Start as a great society program, Head Start was in Vermont, right, um, since its inception. Um, that was a very, you know, at its beginnings was a part-time program, very targeted uh, for children in poverty, um, and only for four-year-olds. Within Vermont, the only way to implement a universal model is to do what's called the mixed delivery system, which includes both childcare um, centers and home-based providers, as well as public schools. Um, and so that allows for um, family choice. That also um, ensures that you actually have the supply needed to provide for all of the kiddos. Um, that that are eligible for care. And so as it relates to the research that I've been doing in Vermont around universal pre-K, um, so we've been doing this both as part of the rail Northeastern Islands, but also um, we did an independent evaluation as EDC. Um, and we've really been looking at implementation of universal pre-K. So our first RAL study examined enrollment rates of children in the 2016-17 school year. And what we really found was that um, children were enrolling um, both in public um, programs as well as private programs, um, but also that um, they were enrolling in programs within their local education agency where they lived, but also outside of their school district. Um, and that was really important um, in, from a policy perspective because the state allows for that, though there were some questions in the legislature about, is that really something that we should have? Well, 17% of kiddos are enrolled outside of their LEA. So it tells us that there's a substantial number of children who are accessing. This has started some great conversations in, both in the legislature and with the two agencies that oversee pre-K in Vermont. And one last thing that um, I think is one of the more interesting um, findings from our evaluation study that we did as EDC was um, we did a parent survey. Um, and what we found from that survey was the majority of families um, that had one parent um, not working, at least one parent not working, had indicated that had they not had access to universal pre-K, they would not have sent their child to another um, early learning program. Um, and I think that that's a really important finding because when we're thinking about wanting to ensure that all of our kiddos have high quality early learning experiences, really understanding whether 
this law is helping children who otherwise would not have accessed early learning experiences actually access early learning experiences is really encouraging. Yeah, I also am um, intrigued by, and we've discussed the importance of transitions and the idea that it's not just a two year experience, but it also is scaffolding and building year by year. Kindergarten is part of the early learning um, spectrum. So is first and second grade. And for that reason, Claire, I bet you can't wait <laughs> to get to that Boston study because they now have longitudinal results. And the Boston um, preschool program in Boston public schools is um, publicly funded, increasingly in mixed delivery setting. And they're taking their high quality curriculum and practices um, all the way up to second grade. Um, these, uh, the, this new study actually um, takes a look longitudinally at um, uh, the pre-K three and four year olds particularly, but I'm eager to see the results of children who have been both in high quality pre-K, but have continued um, same environment, same kind of instructional, instructional modality, active learning, um, play-based learning all the way into second grade and um, the rigor and learning that results from that. I think one of the things, again, gets back to this conversation of how important quality is, right? And so one of the um, concerns that folks have around universal programs is, can we really scale up high quality programming? And I would say, well, if you've got the money, if you're investing the money, you can scale up anything for the most part, right? Um, it's just really around, do, you know, we do need to actually make sustained investment in early care and education in order to make that happen. I would kind of, you know, draw policymakers down to the human endeavor and think about um, what all children ought to be experiencing in that in that the, their day to day lives in um, pre K and um, in terms of specific recommendations uh, for sure, making sure that the adult those children are um, um, interacting with on a daily basis are highly qualified. They're very well trained and educated in child development. They're well compensated for the hard work they do. That all of the parents who are, have been home the last year and a half or close to year and a half know how hard our early childhood educators are working. This is a complex endeavor, just like little kids are very complex in their learning. And so it requires multiple layers of supports for the adults, for the children. A lot of folks might say that, they, that we can't afford to do this. If we're looking um, to the future, we can't afford not to.